So in this case, we have another typical exam question considering our finance and growth. Question number six, it reads 6.1. We are given that, uh, that Google buys a double bed, which costs 12,000 on higher purchase, which costs 12,000 on higher purchase. That is the money given at higher purchase, the money that is at higher purchase, which is actually representing your principal when it is like this, the money that is at higher purchase, the money on higher purchase. It's like your, your starting amount on that higher purchase agreement is your starting. She is charged a simple interest of 12% per annum over six years. So this is the cost on higher purchase, but she's charged what? 12% over six years. Calculate the total amount she will pay for the double bed. As we do understand higher purchase, remember on the introductions of our simple interest, we listed higher purchase there. That higher purchase is part of what? A simple interest formula. So we have to consider our simple interest formula there. That's the major part that you will need. Higher purchase and those short-term investments, they just need simple interest. So we need the accumulated amount. That's our question, and it's a straightforward question. As you can see, guys, the simple interest, this one, so 6.11. Your accumulated amount or the total amount is P into 1 plus IN, or you can write as NI, depending on the way that you understand, or you can just have it as IN. The principal, the amount, the money that is being at higher purchase, the money on higher purchase is the one that you're going to take as your principal there. Be careful. So that's 12,000 into what? One plus the interest rate as a decimal divided by 100. That was going to give you 0 0.12. The number of years over how many years? Six years. Number of years. That is six. So guys, as you can see, this one was a little bit uh, straightforward question that you can consider. Uh, that was going to give us 20,000. 640 rands, which is over six years. This is the money that will be paid everything over six years. So 6.12, how much interest will she pay over this period? The interest now, we are considering to say the money that was supposed to be have paid, it was 12,000 instead. This was our principal. Over a period of Six years, this is now the amount that is supposed to be paid, 20,640. So from this amount to this amount, what is, that is the interest from to this. So it simply represents what? The difference between these two. So I said also, interest is equal to amount minus the principal, if you still remember, uh, from the formulas that we had. This is not the interest rate. No, it's the interest. The, 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 just like uh, from what was supposed to be paid, what are you paying as an extra amount? An extra amount. So is the accumulated amount 20,640 minus the initial amount, which is your principal amount, the one that you started with, that was going to give us 8,000. 640. So she has to pay this as an interest. Someone could have just used 12,000, but you have to add 8,640. That is the interest. And after that, they want you to calculate your monthly installment, monthly over what? Six years. Over six years. What is she supposed to pay? Over six years. The total amount she will pay for the double bed. The total um, she will pay is the one that you calculated here. This is the total amount to be paid over six years. 
So what about monthly, monthly in one month? That is what we are told them. In one month, what is supposed to be paid? That is the monthly installment. In each month, if is to pay this over six years. So the question is over six years, how many months? A year, remember it's what? 12 months. So what about six years? You have to multiply six by 12. So it's going to be six by 12, which is 72 months. So considering the months now, that's 72 months. So if she's paying this amount in 72 months, what about each, each, each month? You have to divide the money to be paid, which is the total by the number of months, how many months, 72 months. So it will be the amount per month. So it's amount per month that you are calculating. It's from amount over number of what? Number of months. The amount over the number, the total amount over number of months. So that is going to give us uh, 2,800, uh, 286, actually, no, 2,286. 67 to two decimal places as you have to consider the money out of the two decimal places. That is how you're supposed to have this question. Monthly, monthly, she's supposed to pay that in each and every month. So for two months, I think that's it, guys. For the monthly, you just have to divide. Then 6.2, we are given the population of a city in KwaZulu Natal is. 2,500,000, the population in the year 2020. Assuming that the population will continue to increase at a constant rate of each year, each and every year, estimate the population of the city at the beginning of 2014. So this is it, guys. This is what is happening here. One, we need to consider, this is population. As you consider the part of your population or the part of growth, population, you are going to use the same compound interest formula that we know. Compound interest formula. Stating... The same thing as we had, remember the compound interest formula, it was stating that the amount is equal to P into 1 plus I to the exponent of N. But this time, the amount, just like we're saying it has accumulated to a certain value. But here we're talking about the population being at a certain value. So it's the population which you call the future population. P was our initial, which is the principal, the mind that you started with there in terms of the population that is the present, the one that is there on the ground. Initially, what is on the ground? The I there is the rate at which, the, the, at which this population is increasing yearly since we are talking about the number of years. So it must be increasing yearly, each year. So in this case, everything was there, guys. You just have to substitute. So the question is, what is the present population? Currently, what is it? 2 million in that 2020. It was 2,500,000. Into what? One plus the rate at which it is increasing yearly, 5,25 divided by 100. It was going to give us that decimal 0, 0,0525 raised to the exponent of what? The number of years. Here is the question, guys. This population is of 2020. The population that you see, it is of 2020. And they're saying, what would be the, the population, guys, where at the beginning, the beginning of what? 2024. The beginning of it. Meaning to say, 
the year 2024, the way is actually excluded that one because we're talking about its beginning. So in terms of our calculation, it means in 2020, the population was increasing. In 2021, it's still increasing. 2022, it's still increasing. 2023, 2024, 2021, uh, I said uh, this is going to be 2021 here. I need this one. 2022 here uh then we're gonna have 20 23 20 21 22 23 in 2024 it is excluded here guys here this one because we are talking about the beginning of it the beginning when we are starting is we are now starting to say by 2024 what is the population? Then we start, okay, it's increasing from there, 2024, 2024, and, and so on. So the number of years, we're talking of 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, which means you're talking about what? Four-year period. So you must be careful in terms of uh, the number of years because sometimes there's a condition where you include that. If it was saying at the end of 2024, you are going to count that 2024. So we're going to use five years. But in this case, we are at the beginning. So 2024 is excluded. So we're talking about how many years? Four years. So you must be careful, guys, on that part. Especially when we reach our grade 11 there, they will give us conditions where you need to consider that as much. But in your level, guys, you won't notice that. Just difference there. 2024 minus 2022. You get four years. Okay. So that is it. You have a number of years, but you're supposed to analyze it that way, which is giving us the number of years. So from there, using our calculator, this was going to give us the 3, uh, 0, 6, 7, 8, 0, 9, comma, 7, uh, 7. It was going to be comma, 7, 7, and so on. But we are talking about the population, the number of people. Can we say comma, 7, 7 people? No. That can be money. If you're dealing with money, two digits after the comma, two decimal places. But for population, number of people, you are supposed to give your answer correct to the nearest whole number because you are dealing with what? People, population. So to the nearest whole number, uh, that is seven. going to change this into a 10. Then it gives a one there. So it was going to be three, zero, six, seven, eight, one zero eight one zero like that so these this will be the future probably or the population that is there in uh, that will be there in 2018 to the nearest all number we're talking of the number of people there. population compound interest formula 6.3 we are given if the current Exchange rate is, that is, we are given a dollar to a rand, then a pound to a rand. Determine the exchange between dollar and pound. They gave you something like this, guys. Each dollar is equivalent to 19.08 rand. And each pound is equivalent to 23.31 rand again. These two amounts, they are related to the what? To the same, all right, to the same thing. Talking of what? The South African rand. Compared with the US dollar, compared with the pound. They are comparing them. But the question is, determine the exchange rate between the dollar and pound. We want to compare these two now. Not to compare dollar to rand or pound to rand, no. But dollar to pound. How can you compare? You can just try to, because this is your own understanding. It's either, when it is like this, it's either you're going to change one of these into another because you, you know they're, rela they're related in terms of the same currents. This is same currents as we can see. So if here there is a 23 rand 23 like this one, this is the one that you target. You take this amount here and ask yourself to say, 
from a dollar that we are given that it is equal to 19.08 rand. What about the 23 rand that we are given there? The 23,31 rand that we are given. How many dollars do we have? What is the equivalent? Why are we talking about the 23, this one? Because if the 23, the same 23 that, that we have, if we know its equivalent in terms of dollars, we are just going to substitute it where the 23 is because 23 is equivalent to one pound. So if it is equivalent to, to one pound, that means the one pound is e equivalent to the money that we have. This, this guy is the same. So the answer for 23 is the answer for one pound. That is the idea there. So from this, you can calculate your dollar. You can do that cross multiplication, whatever that you understand, or you can just take it like this. X over one is equal to this over this. 23.31 uh, over what? 19.08. You have your X value from there. You can, you can have it that way. So in this presentation, if you divide, your x was going to be something like 1,22. So this is 1,22 dollars, which is equivalent to 23, and it's equivalent to what? 1,22 dollars. The same 23 rand that is equivalent to this, it is the same 23 rand that is equivalent to one pound as we saw there. Same, the same 20, this one. Is the one that we are dealing with here. We now equate because we have something that is common. So you work from the common ground to say this is the answer for 23 rand, uh, 31. It is equivalent to one pound. But the same 23 rand, the one that we are comparing here, the same 23 rand, it is equal to what? It is equal to 1,22 dollars. So there is no way, guys. It means these two, they are the same. It means, therefore, each pound is equivalent to $1,22. dollars Each pound will be equal to that. That is what it means. So you can work from a dollar to a pound to say one dollar. In that way, you have to compare with the pound. You could have used that one. Uh, if you wanted that way, guys, you could uh, also ask yourself this way. Instead of comparing the the dollar you can compare from the pound because you are given that each pound is equivalent to I mean South African dollars uh, South African rand twenty three point three one South African rand. So the question is, what about the equivalent of this nineteen? This one because it is the one that is related to the what to the dollar. It is equivalent to what the nineteen comma. 08 rand it is equivalent to what we do not know so we're just going to call it x in what in pounds so same thing x over one is equal to this 19 comma 08 19 comma 08 over 23.31 so x over one is x and you can divide that amount that you are given the 19 uh, point zero eight divided to 23.31 that was going to give us something like 0 0.8185 something, which is 82, 0.82. Where X is representing what? The part here is what? For the pounds. So it is representing 0 0.82 pounds. So this is now the question, guys, that you are simply asking yourself to say, if 19 rand 0 0.08 represents or it is equivalent to 0, 0.82 pounds. Therefore, what can we say about the relationship between the dollar and the pound? Because the same, this one, we are now comparing this. One. Now we are on this 19,08 rand before it was equal to what? Before it was equal to a dollar here when it were given. The same 19,08 rand, this one that we are seeing, the same amount that we are talking about, the South African rand, what is its equivalent to another currency? You are comparing same amount, but compared to different what? Currents. The same, it is equivalent to 0, 0,82. So it means these two, they are equal. A dollar must be equal to us. So therefore, you can also compare 
in terms of a dollar. This is another way. So you can say a dollar because 19.08, .08, it is equivalent to a dollar here. The same 19.08, it is equivalent to our main pounds, 0, 0.82. So it means a dollar is equal to 0, 0.82 pounds. You could have worked it that way. So when you are given same currents that you are working from, you can compare it from one currents, one part. You compare it with both currents to say, like what we said, 23 point this one, it was compared with what? With the pound. So on another calculation, you do it comparing with the dollar now. If you want to choose this 19.08, it's up to you. It is, it is already given that it is equal to a dollar here. So on another end, you compare it to a pound now. So what is that you take from a pound? Already a pound is one pound is to 23. What about the 19.08? What is the equivalent in pounds? That is how you can do it. So let's do revise, guys. As many questions as we can. So we are now given on another question, which is 6.4. Then we are given the Brent crude oil costs $93.78 a barrel each. Calculate the cost in rights of importing a barrel when the exchange rate is to the dollar. To the dollar. Each dollar. That is what they are saying. Each 19 rand uh, point zero 0.08 is equivalent to a dollar. Each. Each dollar that you have, 19.08 rand. So what about these? Well, now, what about that? The 93.078, this one. What is its equivalent to the South African rent? We do not know. We do not know. So we're just going to call that X. Let's solve for X. In any way that you understand from here, guys, once you have this proportion, I talked about this, you can use anything. X over this is equal to this. You cross multiply in that way, whatever that you're going to have, or you can simply cross multiply like this. Take it that way. X multiply is one. So it means it's going to be X is equal to this one. Multiply is the, the values are the one that we need. 19.08 times this. 93.78. You have your X. X is representing what? The money in what? In rents. So whatever that you're going to have, they're supposed to be in rand. So we are going to obtain, uh, that was going to be 1,789.32 uh, South African rands, which from solving, we could have used anyway. We can use X over this. X over 19.08 is equal to this one over this one. Uh, one this one, 93. 93.78 over 1. Then you can do the cross multiplication from there. You're uh, From here, guys, I said, please do work the way you understand. But that is what you're going to have at the end, uh, considering your finance and growth of this question paper. Let us just try to add as much questions as we can, as we do understand in this term 4. We cover everything from what we had since term 1. So make sure you work yourself, you find yourself time to revise any, everything that you had since your term one that is going to be part of your exam. So we shall be working with our previous exam papers for November, but already there are some November question papers that are already available on this channel. So make sure that you can check how are they going to ask the questions. Get read, just understand how do they ask the questions. So this is it, guys. Till we meet again.